A wonderful good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you here at the Technical Forum at the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries this year in 2015 at the Hanover Fairground. Every 15 minutes, you will hear interesting presentations concerning the hydrogen industry. Also, I'd like to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our online guests right now. We are live streaming here at the fair. Our next topic will be the advancement in PEM electrolysis and the realization of a megawatt scale. And please, for that, welcome with me the business development, uh, the vice president, business development technology and new markets, Mr. Everett Anderson. Please, big hands. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to talk today about our uh, advances specifically around our megawatt scale uh, uh, PEM electrolyzer. Um, if I can get this to work here. So a little bit of motivation uh, for why we're looking at this. Um, this uh, is uh, a couple of, of graphs put together um, focused uh, primarily in the US for in this particular case um, where basically if you look at wind capacity um, the, uh, that wind capacity continues to increase in the U.S., um, but it does so um, uh, very localized. And so you uh, uh, certainly run into conditions where that localized capacity um, needs to be uh, uh, basically uh, distributed to other areas where uh, typically the uh, population is, uh, is located. Uh, the other thing you see here is that, that, that uh, the growth in that annual wind capacity continues to go up uh, very dramatically. So what this leads to is uh, uh, grid instabilities, uh, potentially, uh, power outages, and the need for some type of optimization of that grid, um, either through uh, certainly energy storage uh, to mitigate curtailment of these renewable resources, um, but also in uh, stabilization uh, such as frequency and uh, voltage regulation as well. Um, the same thing can be said about solar capacity. Um, uh, again, you can see uh, uh, the parity of that cost uh, driving up the installation of solar, um, uh, 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 both in the U.S. and worldwide. Um, you see the dramatic decrease in uh, the uh, cost of solar, uh, and, the, and then the number of installations this shows in 2002. Uh, we were doing um, one installation every four and a half hours, now we're doing uh, in 2014, one installation every two and a half minutes. So again, uh, driving up that renewable, uh, leading to grid instability and uh, the needs for energy storage. Um, uh, bringing it more localized, uh, a slide from Fraunhofer several years ago, again, uh, illustrating um, the potential uh, impact of, uh, of continued uh, installation of, uh, of wind on the grid. Um, and the impact on basically uh, the, the variable uh, uh, demand and, and supply mismatch. Um, as you project out, you know, 10 years from now, uh, it really shows uh, eating into the, basically the, uh, uh, the base load uh, within the electricity grid, uh, causing significant issues, causing negative pricing and such. Uh, you also have the environmental challenges. So uh, we've seen continued increase in CO2 emissions uh, in various uh, regions of the world. Air pollution is, is uh, a, a, a kind of rising issue. Uh, uh, green mobility uh, is one way to solve that uh, uh, or mitigate that. And uh, again, uh, hydrogen uh, generated to, to, uh, to basically into the, the transportation market um, would, would very much help to, uh, to decrease these CO2 emissions. So we see a huge opportunity for energy storage. Um, uh, you see this, this is in billions of dollars US uh, projected out over the next several years. Um, and the, the, the top markets are US, uh, Japan, China, UK, and Germany. And so that's really the motivation behind us developing a megawatt electrolyzer. Um, the, the PEM electrolyzer uh, basically 
positioned here in the center really gives you the flexibility needed uh, to, to bridge from the, uh, uh, the various renewables um, into pathways, um, either back through electricity, into mobility, um, or other chemical processing or uh, biogas conversion. Uh, just a slide on Proton in terms of, uh, uh, of our history. Um, we've, uh, we've, we've been around for uh, you know, almost 20 years now. Uh, we're a leader in PEM electrolysis. Um, we have a, uh, uh, thousands of units in the field now um, with uh, uh, basically just uh, uh, continued field experience, over 15 megawatts of, of installed capacity. Um, and we continue to scale up our technology um, into larger products um, and uh, hone our manufacturing capability. Um, we have businesses today in industrial gas, uh, uh, power plant electric uh, generator cooling, heat treating, metal seed treatment, uh, semiconductor processing, and, and really now um, using that, that established base to look at these emerging markets in fueling, in uh, energy storage, and in uh, biogas methanization. Just a slide on our product history. So we've basically grown from tabletop units all the way up now to uh, introducing our megawatt PEM electrolyzer uh, uh, this year. Um, that established base uh, and, and uh, uh, continued track record of uh, efficient uh, improvement and scale up really is uh, uh, unique uh, in the marketplace for us today. So if we look at the requirements for this uh, energy storage market, we believe PIM meets all of those. Efficiency, um, the top plot here shows the comparison between PEM electrolysis efficiency and alkaline. It shows a significant advantage uh, at a comparable current density. Dynamic range, again, uh, basically the, the uh, PEM electrolysis operates over a very wide uh, currency, current density window or dynamic range uh, and does so uh, very quickly. Uh, durability, we've shown this before. We've, we've uh, basically have demonstrated in-house uh, 50,000 hours or more uh, 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 durability. Uh, more importantly, we have customers with units in the field uh, with cell stacks that are now approaching eight and 10 years uh, life. And then response time, uh, the, the plot on the bottom here shows the ability of the electrolyzer to uh, basically follow the grid signals uh, very closely, very battery-like, if you will, um, with the ability to ramp in hundreds of amps per second time frame. So this is basically our accomplishments uh, uh, starting the end of last year and going into this year is the, our megawatt PEM system. So you see kind of the uh, design over on the left-hand side of, uh, of a skid-based system. Um, key to all of this is the development of a, uh, of a, a 250 kilowatt PEM electrolyzer stack uh, specifically for this product. Um, and then pictures on the, uh, the right-hand side of actually a one megawatt PEM system that uh, we have installed at our facility and have been operating uh, to, uh, uh, to basically demonstrate uh, our ability to, to operate PEM at this scale. So you see uh, what we have is uh, four 250 kilowatt stacks per megawatt. Uh, the product design is in a one megawatt and two megawatt platform, so four or eight stacks. Um, I don't know if I have a... can't see it here, but uh, uh, the picture up on the upper right, it shows the fluid section with the cell stacks on the right-hand side, um, hydrogen gas management system on the left-hand side, and then the picture down below basically is the, uh, uh, the power electronics, uh, power supplies, transformer, and control panel. Here's some... Uh, since it's a tech talk, here's some actual data. So um, what you see here is uh, basically a, uh, a black start. So we start at time zero. We ramp up, and basically in less than five minutes, 
we, we've ramped up to well over a megawatt of, uh, of uh, PEM electrolysis. So it's showing basically the rapid response. This, is, this happens to be a ramp up in over 400 amps per second. Um, and basically within less than five minutes, uh, we're responding over a megawatt, which again goes back to what are the, uh, uh, the requirements and looking at PEM electrolysis in these energy storage and, and uh, grid stabilization applications. Um, we've done some extensive testing now. We continue to test the design. We've got well over 200,000 uh, operating cell hours uh, under our belt and, uh, and continue to uh, uh, to run those stacks and, and collect more data. Um, this happens to be one durability testing that we're going on. So uh, it's a subscale stack. It's a 65 cell as opposed to the 100 cell uh, uh, 250 kilowatt module that we have in our product. Uh, but we're using this for, for life and durability testing. Um, so you see an overlay of all the, basically the cells on top of each other. But again, a very tight band uh, in terms of showing uniformity across the stack and very stable voltage performance out now what were seven th several thousand hours of, uh, of operating. This particular stack is uh, operating at about 1.9 amps per square centimeter current density, uh, just under 60 C, uh, and, and the design is uh, producing hydrogen at 30 bar. Here's a layout of the, uh, the two megawatt product, uh, basically broken out into uh, a classified and non-classified section. So the classified section uh, contains the uh, electrolyzer stacks themselves, fluid management, hydrogen gas management system, um, and the hydrogen dryer. And then the non-classified area would consider could basically the, the power supply racks, transformer and such, um, and, the, and the control panel. This can be uh, designed for an indoor installation. This can also be packaged in uh, ISO containers, two ISO containers, one for the non-classified and one for the classified, uh, and basically uh, installed on site. Um, again, just talking a little bit about costs. So uh, we've already demonstrated the ability to significantly reduce capital cost of electrolyzer, PEM electrolyzers as a function of scale. So this just shows um, our one comparison of our one normal meter uh, product that's in the field to uh, uh, basically our C-series product, which is a 30 normal cubic meter product. And it shows basically with simply scaling up the technology, um, you have 70% reduction in uh, the dollars per kilowatt cost um, with that scale up. So clearly, uh, the uh, in al along with advances in cell stack design and cost reduction, um, the, the balance of plant uh, does not scale linearly. You can take advantage of that as you, as you move to larger size. Um, and so therefore, uh, basically with this uh, scale up in, in uh, uh, factor of 30 output, we've seen this, this, uh, this cost reduction. We see that same trend continuing as we look to the, uh, the megawatt. So again, here's Another plot starts with that same one normal meter unit on the far left and basically shows the trajectory to cost reduction um, in the one megawatt and actually shows already some work that we've projected out looking at future cost reductions as we go to the two megawatt size. Um, uh, we believe uh, this is really uh, a focus of engineering scale up. Uh, we believe the technology has been, been de-risked um, from the, all the R&D work that we've done to date. Um, and uh, we feel very confident that, uh, that we can meet the, the cost targets that are required in this energy storage application. So in summary, um, certainly the energy storage market is a huge opportunity for us. Um, we're executing on our megawatt class electrolyzer. Um, we are focused on the European market. We believe that's the first mover market for us. Um, but we're also looking at complementary markets in biogas upgrading and certainly in mobility. And, uh, and we continue to uh, work to maintain a world leadership position in, in PEM Electrolyzer. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can now accept questions from the audience.
Well, there's one question. Thank you, Everett, for this kind presentation. One question to the Black Start. You mentioned that you rise up the uh, uh, current 400 amps per second. So does it mean that you reach the uh, uh, full power in, in five minutes and also the, the temperature 58 degrees centigrade in uh, five minutes? If you look at that plot, um I can't have it here, but uh, you see it how it peaks at about 1,100 kilowatts, and then it kind of decreases. So that's that's the temperature effect. So the I think the uh, the system temperature is catching up with that uh, um, with that system. So we were we were starting an ambient temperature. Um, so as it rolls over, then that basically the the, the unit is heating up. Okay, unfortunately time is already over, but I want to say thank you, Mr. Everett. That was a wonderful presentation. Also, the audience wants to thank, so big hands. Thank you. Next topic, in only two minutes time, will be hydrolysis as a hydrogen source for H2 on-demand solutions. And for that, we'll hear scientists from the Fraunhofer Institute, Dr.